Hello, welcome back. We're going to talk about uh, subscriber suggested stock here. This is uh, Future Holdings Limited. It's a Nasdaq company and it's a recent, relatively recent IPO, 2019, a Hong Kong company. Again, suggested by one of our subscribers and uh, I'm very happy to hear from you guys. I mean, suggestions about examining companies. I'm getting a, quite a few lately and I love it, but uh, please be a little bit patient because it takes time to make these videos and um, I'm, I'm, I have quite a few on my backlog right now. And uh, regardless of that, uh, thanks again for suggesting. And uh, it's awesome to take a look at this because I like examining stocks myself and companies. Now this one, as you can see here, is an online brokerage and a wealth management platform in Hong Kong. And uh, as you can understand, since this is a Hong Kong uh, uh, pretty much uh, stock, you would expect a little bit of a downturn to have happened uh, with that. And if we take a look at the three month chart, you could kind of see it here. The company used to be at about uh, 48, 50 here. And if you take a look at the year chart, the one year chart, again, it's uh, much, much lower than what it used to be. About 174 here, insane. And the max chart kind of paints the similar story. Similar story here, the company goes high and high and high and then went down. And remember in some previous videos, I was suggesting, I was pretty much talking about um, uh, resistance levels. See this one here, very, very clear. 183, 177, 178. So whenever the price reaches these points here, we have potential sellers coming in. And um, this is something to always bear in mind. And especially when this breaks the, uh, what we are calling the support line over here, this kind of is the beginning of a downtrend. These are all technical uh, patterns, which are irrelevant to the fundamentals of the company, of course. But it's useful to know a few things about this because this one has to do with the psycho psychology of traders. Because uh, if you are a person who actually bought here or the person who bought here or the person who bought here, the higher you bought, uh, the more of a bug holder you were. And so people who, ha who have bought at these levels, for instance, or these levels and they haven't sold where the company went uh, back here, they are now they are now losing a lot of money and if they haven't sold and the company starts going higher this is a level probably a little bit earlier that they will start they will start selling quite a lot of again this is a little bit irrelevant in terms of uh, the future holdings stock but i just wanted to mention it because it's a good good knowledge to have and uh, it's good to realize that these things happen because uh, traders are actual people and psychology matters when we're talking about tra trading it doesn't really matter when we're talking about fundamentals though, and this is what we're going to be examining next. Uh, you will see that the, the company is down 81% almost, that's insane. And um, that is uh, from one year, basically. And um, the key metrics here, the P ratio of the company is 14.8, uh, that's uh, pretty, pretty good over here. It's uh, going lower and lower, it used to be higher as you'll see. And the price to free cash flow ratio, even uh, lower here, 2.16 is uh, pretty great. Very, very low price to free cash flow ratio. This is almost trading at free cash flow levels. Insane. Okay, so outstanding shares though, this is what I don't like to see. I never like this. Uh, a lot of uh, issued shares, meaning that we are getting diluted where if we have bought uh, in 2019, getting diluted every year. That's not great, of course. Free cash flow to total liabilities, uh, quite a few total liabilities here and uh, not too much cash flow, I guess. Uh, that's That may be a little bit of a concern, but not necessarily. The five-year revenue growth here, though, is uh, um, growing amazingly. And the same thing with the net income growth, even more um, good growth here. And also, also the free cash flow growth and um, the total equity. Total equity could be increasing because of the outstanding shares though, so bear that in mind. The company has been issuing a lot of shares and so they are making money from these shares. And um, the debt to equity ratio, as you would kind of expect, is uh, elevated. Uh, again, we would kind of expect that based on what we saw here, but we will examine it in detail. The return on equity is 15%, that's pretty good. Good, good margins here, net income margins. And uh, yeah, let's take a little bit of a closer look at uh, the financial statements. Kind of want to see the, the actual numbers here. This is a smaller company. Sometimes we don't have uh, all of the numbers about these companies. Um, this is the third party numbers. I'm actually getting the feed from a third party company that I'm actually paying for. And um, as you'll see here, the net income is uh, actually used to be negative and it keeps increasing. That's also something that I actually really, really like to see a lot, especially when it's increasing every year. So that's a great thing to see here. 
good stuff. And what about the balance sheet? Is it also increasing here? What about the total assets also increasing and the total liabilities? You would expect that. But still, look at the equity here was negative and then starts growing and growing and growing. Good stuff. Very good stuff from the company. The cash flow statement is the next thing that I want to examine. And uh, you will see that the net uh, cash provided by operating activities actually used to be better in 2020. is a little bit less in 2021. Now, I'm wondering whether there is some, something that uh, happened here. There's a change in working capital that's added back over here that, that actually really, really increases the um, the, um, the actual uh, free cash flow because that is added, added back to the cash flow. Uh, it's not a cash expense. So this is why we're getting elevated uh, free cash flow here. This is not a regular uh, entry here. And so typically you're looking at the company making a few million here. This, this one was 2.4 billion. So this is not typical. And this is why you're looking at um, some... Uh, you know, some extra uh, net cash provided by operating activities here. By the way, the growth numbers here, so for some reason, the company is reporting them. They, ha they have an issue with uh, an increment by one. So this number is actually for this year. This uh, number is for this year. I have actually let them know they will uh, fix that. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> this is a little bit weird. So this, this 900 number here is about uh, this, uh, this year, pretty much. There was an incre increase. So yeah, there is a little bit of a bug here, but um, the cash from investing activities, um, as you'll see here, is negative, which is good. The company is actually investing uh, normal stuff and purchasing some investments here. So they are investing in the markets as well. Not too many, not too much actually, not too much money being uh, spent here. Cash from financing activities, which is a very interesting part here because this is all positive, as you'll see. Other financing activities, this is debt pretty much and uh, common stock issued, as you'll see here, quite a lot of stock, 1.4 billion. This is something that I don't like, of course, and also the company is getting quite some debt. They do have quite some cash here, over here. They, they're, they're actually creating quite a lot of cash. Look at this here. They had 1 billion and now they have 7.7 .7 after about five years or four years or so. And... Um, the free cash flow, which uh, obviously I love to see, it keeps increasing. This was the odd one out, so I wouldn't pay too much attention. This is still pretty pretty good to my eyes over here. Uh, again, because this one was a one-time thing. And um, what I'm going to do here, of course, is we're going to take a look at our stock evaluation tool. This looks good so far, but we do want to examine, uh, examine it with our projections because a good company may be an expensive company and we don't want that. So, the revenue growth here, the company has been growing tremendously well here, as you'll see, yet we cannot give that high numbers, of course. This is pretty great growth, but it's not going to be happening every year. And um, we will go something like, let's just say, 18, um, 20, and 22. Pretty high growth still, because the company keeps growing nicely, and this is the five-year discounted cash flow model, so they very, very well could achieve these numbers. But we're not going to go like 30 or 35. I think that would be too much. Now, the next thing that we're examining is the net income margin. And this is a little bit of the odd one out. Typically, these are the values that the company is achieving. And uh, we're going to go, let's go 18, be a little bit more cautious, 20 and 22. Maybe 25, because the company does do some years where they have 50 and uh, 47. So that 25 is probably fair for our high projections. The free cash flow margin here. Again, these are, this is way too much. Uh, this is not normal, of course, this kind of free cash flow margin, because the company is having quite a lot of free cash flow, but not much net income, as you'll see here. And so this is basically adjusted for, for uh, depreciation, amortization, stock-based stock compensation, and things of that sort that actually elevate the free cash flow here. So this is, and this is why the model actually uses both these uh, margins here, because you're seeing here that the company doesn't make that much net income when compared to the free cash flow, which is more compared to the to the net income. And so we, we will not be using these values here. We have to use something that makes more sense. Something like this here is probably what makes more sense. And so we're going to go something like, uh, let's just say 90, 100 and 110. This is not normal. Uh, a thousand, <laughs> what was it here? Like 3,000, a thousand, this is not normal, of course, as you can understand, because this is about the company making 10 times more free cash flow than net income. And as you can understand, this is uh, not a regular thing. And this is not a healthy thing, of course. So the annual return here is going to be 13% is what I want to be making out of a stock of that sort. And so we're going to hit calculate. I think the numbers are fine. 
and you will see here that we are very very close to the medium projections a little bit far from the low ones and better than the high ones so this one points to a stock which uh, I think it's close to uh, being an interesting stock to purchase maybe a little bit of a extra discount would make it even better but I could see someone adding a little bit here cautiously maybe opening a position and uh, letting it roll for a little while would be interesting I kind of like it but uh, I'm, I'm being cautious and especially with China right now and so when I'm buying China I want to buy the very best which is um, <clears throat> right now I feel it's like Alibaba maybe, JD or Baidu, companies of that sort and uh, kind of try to avoid the ones that are a little bit in between and they are, they are good but not great and so this one yeah uh, it may be worthwhile to wait a little bit and see how it goes uh, maybe it gives you a better price in the next uh, uh, month or so like over here potentially that would be great a great price 25 it's, it, this actually happened like a month ago wow so yeah this was a very good price here because you see 35 was like uh, our low estimates here so yeah this one was a great price right now i think it's a little bit elevated so yeah bear that in mind and uh, yeah consider it so thank you for suggesting this stock i hope this analysis helped you a little bit and uh, guys if you are not subscribed remember to subscribe because very soon i will be giving you access to this tool and please like the video that really really helps the channel grow helps with the algo and let me know what you think about this company leave a comment below and uh, in the meantime Take a look at this video that I made earlier and I'm discussing Alibaba and what's going on currently with the stock and why it's actually a bargain based on Warren Buffett himself and I'm breaking down why that is. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.